the corner of every single block and they've started shouting out whenever the police are coming past. And it's happening regularly, the police have just gone past again, they came past about five minutes ago. <laughs> streets are noticeably quieter, but the other thing I've noticed is that at the far end where I can see a lot of the drug dealing takes place, more and more people are desperately arriving there trying to buy their drugs before the curfew so they can get back home in time. But the murder epidemic in Trinidad has more behind it than the activities of neighbourhood gangs. As people hurried home, I spotted Inspector Singh and his men who set up a roadblock on one of the main routes out of the city. With decades of experience, he had his own views on the real causes of the violence plaguing his district. Why are there so many guns and drugs here in Trinidad? Because of the all close proximity to the sort of American countries, you find it through the port, to the, the, the airport. Through the ports and the airport? Yeah. Is that common? Yeah, yeah. Because in the past, we, uh, um, we said um, we have made many seizures at this location. Guns and drugs on Trinidad streets are byproducts of a vast and secret industry. Trinidad has become a major transshipment point for drugs coming out of the Southern American countries into North America and Europe. As a result, the Trinidadian Coast Guard have to patrol the waters around their country in an attempt to stop the drug smugglers. During the state of emergency, they also have a three-mile exclusion zone, which gives them extra powers to stop and board vessels. For about 20 minutes out of the Coast Guard's base, you can see Port of Spain City behind me there. But if you look over this side, you can see how the whole of the island is basically a mass of inlets and little coves. It's a smuggler's paradise around here. South American mainland is just seven miles away from Trinidad. shipped to Europe and America. What's left is sold on the domestic market. The smugglers often bring guns to protect their shipments, but once the drugs leave, the guns are sold on the streets. The Coast Guard spokesman, Lieutenant John Baptiste, admitted that most of the drugs get past them. It will be foolhardy of me to say that yeah, we stop everything. Right? That would that, be wrong. That would be a erroneous statement altogether. Right? But I do believe that we make an impact. Recent seizures suggest that most of the drugs smuggled into Trinidad are shipped out again through official ports of entry. This is Port of Spain, but at another major port, Point Lisas, a funding round has left authorities without a scanner to screen containers. According to UN estimates, in 2004, smugglers paid nearly £80 million pounds a year in bribes to Trinidadian officials. I've been repeatedly told that some people in authority wow. were paid to protect major drug traffickers. Right. Most people to the too government. afraid to say so on camera. Right? The majority of the to the government. are very good officers and do their job. But there is one argument in the police that is corrupt. The problem with this police... I went to a criminology class at the University of West Indies where many of the students work in law enforcement. This woman, who asked not to be named, has been interviewing police officers for a study. Police officers complain that they are not well paid. So, 
So it is my opinion, and I do work alongside uh, police officers and law enforcement leaders, that if you are protecting someone in the high society, you will get money for it. So it's like a supplement to your income. So that is why a lot of police officers are corrupt because they do protect the big fish. I've heard that opinion before, but I was shocked by what I was about to hear from one of her fellow students. I am a policeman for the past 32 years. And with the, with the appearance of drugs on the scene, that changed, it, that changed the play. And some prefer to turn a blind eye. And not all police are comfortable with turning a blind eye, I would say, when it comes down to that. Because if they, are, if they spoke out, they were eliminated. Policemen were eliminated. Wow. Policemen were transferred. They, they, they were set up. All kinds of things started to happen from the top. So police were afraid to speak. So eliminated means transferred. You're sure someone did not go there to the talk? Sure, despite the size of the drug and shipping industry that uses Trinidad, few major traffickers have ever been arrested. And the state of emergency does nothing to dismantle this industry, which fuels the murder epidemic of guns and drugs. Just arriving at the top of Nelson Street, we got a call about half an hour ago from a contact saying that the police had knocked down the whole area. They were searching houses and arresting people. So we'll find out what's going on. interagency task force which involves the army and a number of other agencies they're going from building to building and from what i've heard they don't care if people are in their house or not they're taking down every door and marching in wherever they see fit that's what they gotta do to find these criminals and then these guns excuse me sir from the bar. this is a confined Hi. area that the exercise is being conducted okay you can stay on the pavement on either side but okay. once you traverse uh -huh. Through here, bad, right? Yeah. We cannot be held responsible if there's any untoward incident, and that's all we see. All right. The police arrested three men and seized a substantial quantity of cocaine. But after two months and over 4,000 arrests, the street-level criminals are still the main focus of the state of emergency. I went back up the hill to see Bumbe in St. Barbs. He told me that until the government tackled the powerful figures behind the drug trade, nothing would change. Where are all the drugs and guns coming from? The government would have you believe that it's the boys on the street themselves bringing it in. The little black boy now the pawn. But the pawn is the one that always pay the price because the big fish. That's how he sells your money because he's in the human being in the society. So true. Let me say, you're bringing in 10 containers of marijuana. That act like hell. It can act like that somebody has a little bit of power down the order to, to, to leave them containers alone. During this state of emergency, there's a, a, lot, of a, a lot of focus on, on the boys on the streets. Do you think it's going to stop the violence in the long run? The boys on the streets could be replaced by other boys on the streets. So simple, 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 simple. So it's a continue, continue, continue. Stop it. Sad, I've come to the office of Trinidad's Prime Minister to meet her national security advisor, Gary Griffiths. He is one of the architects of the state of emergency and one of its most outspoken supporters. It's probably no surprise to you to hear that every person I speak to in Trinidad tells me, when I ask them where do the drugs and guns come from, they tell me that the ports the customs authorities, the Coast Guard and the police are 100% involved in the trafficking of drugs and guns 
Why are you not focusing on that? Every single country in the world will have corrupt police officers, will have corrupt persons in the judiciary. Yeah, have we know that, but don't know if it does that something about them. We need to call a state of emergency. We need a state of emergency to stop law abiding citizens in this country from being killed. The state of emergency is going to be completely ineffective in dealing with that top level Correct. crime. Correct. But that top level crime is fundamental because. Once they're in place, and once they stay in place, they can always speed down, and there will always be desperate people at the bottom willing to take their money. And that, yeah, but it's, and it's not a state of emergency before, during, or after that is going to stop that. That has to do with the criminal justice system. How do you acquire the assets? So that is legislation. So exactly. Do you not think that these sorts of things should have been brought in before you go through so a state of emergency? That's right. That's right. That is legislation. Mm. In your country, it took years for that to, to be to be implemented. You can't wait years to implement legislation to stop innocent persons from being killed on the streets. Oh, that is a fine excuse. On the street outside Port of Spain Magistrates Court, I met up with Susan and Ingrid. The mothers I'd met earlier, their sons were due in court. Susan, what do you think is going to happen today? Um, we are hoping that they come out today. Mm. Are you nervous? I'm a little nervous, yes. I didn't eat this morning. I didn't want to drink anything, but I'm nervous. Right? Mm. I want to see my children back home again, so yes, I'm a little nervous. In a separate hearing that morning, Seven other men accused of being in a gang were released due to lack of evidence. So Susan and Ingrid had a good reason to be hopeful. The court case didn't quite go as everyone had hoped. The magistrate decided to adjourn for another week. It must be really disappointing. It's a very hard, hard thing going on because it's very hard. Coming to court and they think they may come out and then it's like go back up the road like it's nothing to them but the behavior of family. How was it to see him for the first time? It was alright, but we are still disappointed. We are still disappointed. Ten days later, Susan and Ingrid's sons were released due to lack of evidence. The Trinidadian government introduced the state of emergency to make people's lives safer. But when it ends in a few weeks' time, nothing fundamental will have changed. Until the government tackles official corruption and the drug transshipment industry, drugs and guns will leak onto Trinidad's streets, and the murders will continue.